If you grew up in the 90s, chances are you played Doom. Let's create a mini version using JavaScript and WebGL. It is surprisingly satisfying to build. Today we're coding using the free online editor at editor.p5js.org. The first thing we need to do is set our canvas to WebGL mode so we can render things in 3D. I'll also change the background color to sky blue. Next, I'm going to create a new constant variable called game map that will store the layout of our playing area. This will be an array of strings, essentially making a two-dimensional bird's eye view map of everything in our game. I'm using a capital X to denote where we should place the walls, a lowercase p to denote our player, and a lowercase e to denote an enemy. Next, I'll define some more global constants. The grid size I'll set is 150 pixels. The personal space of our player I'll set is 50 pixels. The run speed I'll set at 25 pixels, and the walk speed at 10 pixels. These are negative values because we're actually walking away from the camera when we're moving forwards. The mouse sensitivity adjusts how quickly we allow the user to turn around using the mouse. I'll set this to a low value, but you could adjust it if you wish. And I also need to set some camera variables to drive the camera's position. I played around with different values here until I found something I liked. Let's now define our main variables. A wall texture for creating a nice brick pattern. The walls, the player, and some enemies. For the wall texture, I've created a repeating brick pattern using stable diffusion and uploaded this into an images directory. Let's now load this image into our wall texture variable. Okay, we're all set up now. Let's start drawing the game. So we have something to look at. Let's define the enemy class first. The enemy constructor will take an X and Z position and we're going to set the radius to 50 pixels. I don't need a Y position because everything will be on the ground, i.e. Y equals zero. To display our enemy, we're gonna do everything inside a push and pop block, as we always do. I'll call no stroke, so there are no grid lines, and I need to translate the enemy to the correct coordinates. Note, the Y value here is negative radius. Can you work out why? Then we just draw the enemy as a red sphere. Before we start drawing the game, we'll need to also set up the player class so we can initialize the camera with the correct perspective. For now, I'll create a basic player class with an X and Z coordinate and the direction the player is facing, which we'll just set to negative one for now. We can then add a new method called update camera to the player class. This method does a little trigonometry to determine the camera's position and where it should be pointed based on the player's position and direction. We're now ready to start laying out our game. To do this, I'm going to loop through the strings in our game map array to get a Z and X coordinate to work on. I can then look up what kind of tile object is at that very position on the map. Is it a wall, our player, or an enemy? We can then calculate the X and Z position of this tile inside our game world. I'm using the grid size constant to create each tile as a square, 150 pixels by 150 pixels. If the tile is our player, let's initialize the player variable with an instance of our player class. And if the tile is an enemy, let's initialize an enemy instance and push it onto our enemy's array. Finally, inside the draw function, we can now call update camera on our player and the display method on each of our enemies. If we're lucky, we should now be able to see the enemy closest to us. Great, some progress. Let's add some lights to make it seem more 3D. I'll add an ambient light and a directional light. Next, let's draw the floor. I'm going to create a new function called draw floor to do just that. I'll make the floor a nice sea green color and draw it as a plane. Oops, it looks like the floor is more of a wall. I'll use the rotate X function with a parameter of half pi to rotate it by 90 degrees along the X axis to make it lie flat. Much better. Now speaking of walls, let's start work on defining the wall class so that we can start drawing our map. The constructor will take an X and Z coordinate as well as the width, height, and depth of the wall. We'll also write a display function that will apply our wall texture, the image of bricks I showed you earlier, and draw the wall as a box in 3D space. Now we can go up and add a wall segment where we see an X on our map. We'll also need to loop through all the walls in the global draw function and call its display method. Wow! Suddenly we have what looks to be a real game, but I can't move around yet. Let's fix that.
To start with, I'm going to define two new methods on our player class. Turn towards mouse and move forward, and call these on every draw loop. Let's start working on turn towards mouse first. If the mouse is outside the canvas, I just want to return early. The user clearly isn't engaged in the game, and it will be annoying to have our player spin around and around. Next, I want to define an area in the center of the canvas where we won't turn our player. I'm calling this the no turn zone. If the mouse is inside this area, we'll just keep the player moving in the current direction. But if the mouse is outside of that area, in other words, on either the left or right side of the canvas, we'll calculate how far it is from the center of the canvas, then dampen this by the mouse sensitivity value, which you'll remember was a very small number, and then add this to the camera direction. This should allow our player to turn around. Let's check it out. You beauty! And yes, that looks like our map. Okay. The final thing to do is to implement the ability for our player to walk or run around the playing area. Let's do that now. I'm going to add two new class variables to our player class, is moving forward and is running, both initialized to false. I'll then implement the key pressed and key released functions to toggle is moving forward if the user presses the up arrow key and is running if the user presses the shift key. These are pretty simplistic controls, but they're fine for our little demonstration. By the way, I'd love to see you remix my code and come up with something better. Please post a link to your version in the comments. The full source code is available in the description of the full YouTube video. With the key presses taken care of, we just need to implement the move forward method. If the user isn't moving forward, we can just return early. That's easy. Otherwise, let's set the speed based on whether the user is running or walking and calculate the new X and Z position, again, with a little trigonometry. If the user hasn't tried to walk through a wall, I then want to update the player's X and Z position. I'll need to create this final method, check collisions, to loop through all of the walls and do the calculations. If the player's new position plus the player's personal space that we defined above would overlap with the base of any wall, then we'll return true, and the user won't be able to move to this position. Otherwise, we'll return false, and the player can move to that location. We should now be able to walk or run around our playing area and explore our map. Our project is now finished. If you want to learn to code in bite-sized steps, like this video and subscribe. Until next time, happy coding.